Why has Lower Motor Motorstock been crashing? What is happening, investors? It is your boy, Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the t-shirt to prove that fact. And today we're going to speak about one of my personal favourites, Lawrence Town Motors. Most of you will more than likely be aware that the merger just got approved and a ticker symbol should be changing from DPHC to RIDE on this coming Monday, which is quite exciting. I've literally been covering these guys from day one. I think they're a very exciting long-term growth play. But they have been crashing, and they have been crashing hard. We have fallen from peaks of $31.40 a share from Monday the 21st of September, all the way down to $20.40 five cents as of recording this video and as per usual I do think there are a few reasons for this happening a lot of the same reasons that I would give you guys for workhorse and for Hylion and even for Tesla and funnily enough for the large majority of stocks out there right now. Lawrence Motors is a company who I don't think has done too much wrong as of late whatsoever, which is why seeing this crash actually gets me as an investor quite excited. Now, Lawrence Motors already is the second biggest position in my portfolio, and I am contemplating buying more quite heavily at current prices, so that should speak for itself on where I stand with the company. Now, as of late, I've seen a couple of uh, videos from bears, and I've seen a lot of the points brought up, and a lot of relatively redundant points, and a lot of people making bearish videos during a relatively bearish market. Well, I mean, there's a couple of things I'm sick of hearing, okay? One is people comparing any EV SPAC to Nikola. Anybody with half a brain could have seen that Nikola was overvalued from literally day one. It really is that simple. You cannot evaluate a grow stock at the stage of its life cycle that Lower Cell Motors is at the same way you would other more established companies. I should make it clear from the start, guys. I am a long-term growth stock investor. I am not here to make a quick 100%. I initially bought Lower Sound Motors at $11.80 a share. I didn't sell a single share in the 30s and I don't plan on doing so if we hit it again. Long-term growth stock investing, you will live through many crashes such as this one. So be ready for that. But anyway, right before we get into the video, can I please ask you to hit that juicy like button, my friends. One like equals one bull. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know where you stand on Lower Sound Motors right now. I'm very interested in hearing. And please, my friend, if you are new around here consider hitting that juicy red subscribe button and helping your boy on the road to 50,000 subs with that being said let's get into it baby so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the peak of the stock chart and bring it back down to where we are today okay so with lower sell motors we peaked at $31.40 as of right now we're down pretty much 35% and we are red a little bit pre-market now let's look at some of you know not necessarily their competitors but people in a similar industry people at a similar stage of their life cycle so workhorse okay six month chart workhorse is down very similar 34 percent okay now nicola obviously i've done terrible they're actually down they, they reach 90 dollars, so they're actually down more than this they're pretty much down about 75 percent in value as of right now and then if we go to hylion it does not get much better these guys are down over 55 percent their peaks are actually above 55 dollars a share so essentially go ahead and look at the large majority of these ev stocks in particular some of the spacs and you know the workhorses even the teslas things like that tesla's down about 15 percent from recent highs as well this has without a doubt been part of a broader market sell-off and not just part of a broader ev market sell-off just a broader market sell-off in general. The Nasdaq is down about 5%. It was down as much as 12%. Now, I know it's nowhere near as big, but I mean, this is the Nasdaq. The S&P is down a few percent as well. Th this is different. These are big indexes. Some of the safest investments deemed by a lot of investors. So, I want to speak about the industry, okay? The EV industry. This is one of the most exciting, most hyped-up industries in the entire world right now. And where do short sellers go? Where do people with short interest or even short time frame bulls go? They go to the most exciting industries because there is the most volatility. In general, there's going to be small market caps and there's also going to be large percentages of the floats traded on a daily basis. So this is essentially a day trader's dream or even a swing trader's dream, regardless of whether they want the price to go up or to go down. So from the very beginning, what kind of investor are you? I'm a long term growth stock investor, okay? So I'm fine with this happening. I mean, if we lose another 50%, you know, I've lost some money in the short term. It's fine. I'll buy some more. I'm a long-term growth stock investor, baby. That's why I didn't sell at 3140. A lot of people say I'm crazy. I mean, I was up well in excess of 100% and I didn't sell a single share because I'm not worried about 100%. If that was the kind of investor I am, 
I would have done it. I've been up 100% in Lordstown Motors in Workhorse. I was up 175% in Hylion. I've been up 100% in Neo. I have not sold a single share of any of them. And they've all come back down massively. And people will say to me, well, why didn't you sell there and buy back in low? If I knew what the market was going to do, of course I'd do that. But think about time in the market if you're a long-term investor. And you're going to hold a company like Lordstown Motors for 25, 30 years. There's going to be a lot of 20, 30, 40, 50% swings in that time span. And yes, Sometimes you might get it right and you might get your 100% and you might get to buy back in 25% cheaper. Sometimes you might get it wrong, okay? And you might sell when you're up 100% and you may never get to buy back in cheaper. So from a long term point of view, I know I could have swung this. I know I could have made my 100% on all of these companies, but I didn't sell because I genuinely believe I'm going to make much more than 100% down the line. So I want to get that clear from the start. Yes, even with Workhorse. I mean, I called Workhorse hitting $30 for a second time before a dip and I didn't sell. I called it perfectly to the day. And since then we've lost 30% in value and I didn't sell because that was my expectation. I'd never expected it to go this low. Who was to know? I can't time the market, neither can you. So that is the first reason for this sell-off in my personal opinion. We're speaking about what is potentially the most exciting, most hyped up, and potentially most overvalued industry right now. This is a short dream in the short term, but it can be a bull's dream in the long term if you're willing to hold through the tough times. Now the next thing I want to speak about is it's a SPAC. And a lot of people used to love SPACs because of Nikola, but now a lot of people are afraid of SPACs because of Nikola, and also more recently, because of Hylion. We all saw what happened when Hylion went public. Yeah, we got this nice little boost, but boom, they sold off over 50%. It's been horrible for Hylion investors. Somehow I'm still in the green, but I know a lot of people are down massively right now. So a lot of people are, you know, cutting their losses on all of their SPACs or all of their EV plays because they cannot handle the heat. There's also a lot of new investors in EV and a lot of investors want to think they can be long term. But I mean, it's hard to do if you haven't experienced crashes like this. I understand that completely. A lot of people are very emotionally attached to their money and aren't going to be willing to sit on red for a while. I understand, that's fair enough, each to their own. But I do think that's another reason for this sell-off in particular. A lot of people also bought Hylion off of the back of Workhorse, okay? Workhorse has been on this big crash for a considerable period of time. So people could be cutting their losses on both stocks. And I do think that's why we see them move somewhat together a lot of the time. Even though they're completely different companies, generally they go up and down similar percentages at a time. They are genuinely some of the main reasons. Now one of the big concerns is, what if after the merger everybody just sells their shares? The pipe investors, Steve Burns, etc. So here's something I want to show you guys really quickly. So Lorristown and Diamond Peak have now formalised their merger agreement with the official approval of the SPAC shareholders. What happens next? And it's the very last paragraph I want to speak about. The prospectus has also defined the lockup period for the shares issued to various parties as a part of this merger. So the lockup period is essentially the period of time after the merger happens before certain parties can sell their shares. So sponsors will face a lockup period of one year following the closing of the business combination. Now on the other hand, shares awarded to GM, Workhorse Group and BGL will face a lockup period of six months following the closure. Moreover, Class A common shares held by Stephen Burns, okay, the CEO will face a general lockup of one year, while 50% of those shares will be restricted from being sold for a period of two years. So there is good lockup periods here for all of the big shareholders, which means that even if they wanted to, even if Lord's Time Motors was $100 a share in a month's time, they could not sell. So that's one thing that is important to understand. I mean, a lot of people speak about Trevor Milton, Nicola, him running away with all of his money. Some of it is locked up, but here we can see very good lockup agreements. So the big money in this company won't be able to sell as soon as the merger goes through if there is a considerable spike. So what is happening right now is predominantly you and me. It is predominantly the retail investor. There is a lot of fear in the world of retail investors right now for numerous reasons, most of which I just spoke about, but let's also think about the election that's coming up, which is causing major uncertainty in the market, specifically the EV market, because I don't think people even realize if they want Trump or Biden to win from an EV stock market point of view. I'm not even going to get into that. I think either way, we genuinely are going to be fine, but yeah. And then also the stimulus package, the uncertainty of it, how much money are the Americans going to be getting, etc, etc. There is so much uncertainty in the market right now, and it's very evident to see it's being manipulated, which is fine. This is absolutely always going to happen in the stock market. It's going to be something you're going to have to be okay with if you want to be a long-term investor. If you're going to feel the need to sell every time you see a 50% sell-off, 
off, you're never going to hold a stock for more than a couple of years. Unless we're in really good market conditions, but you get the picture I'm trying to make. So that is one thing I really wanted to point out to you guys. The lockup period, because I know this could be something that's causing some anxiety in regards to some people. And I do think that people who haven't done the research and the people who don't know this, they could have sold off 100% because they're afraid that, you know, the big money's just going to sell and we're going to go back down below $10. I really don't think that's going to happen. But I'm fine with this. In fact, I am quite happy with this. I'm not happy with my position in Lawrence Motors. Even though it is my second biggest position, that's how much I love this company. I have 210 shares in the company. I would like 400 in all honesty, especially around current prices. I'm not going to rush into anything, but I probably will start, you know, buying little increments somewhat soon. The next thing I want to speak about is this, okay? DPHC currently has a short volume ratio of 27%. That is still a big short volume ratio, my friends. And it has most certainly been pushing the stock price down lower. Now, we can see here, clear downtrend. It's been going down constantly for a long time. Pretty much a month more or less exactly. It's been downtrending big time. And this is true for a lot of EV stocks right now. We see Hylion, we see Workhorse, etc, etc. There's a few outliers, but a lot of them have been going down considerably. The shorts are in control right now. There's not enough massive news coming out. And as I said earlier, there's so much uncertainty in the market. The shorts have the upper hand so they can keep pushing the stock's price down low. There's people like me, where EV is our biggest position in our portfolio. I mean, it's a massive percentage of my portfolio and I love EV. It's my favorite growth stock sector if you have a long-term outlook of 10 plus years. I haven't bought any in a month because I'm not trying to catch a fallen knife. Literally, look at Lower Style Motors. The last time I bought any EV stocks was more than a month ago. I haven't bought Lower Style Motors in a while, but you get the picture. In a month, it's been going down constantly. I'm not trying to cash that knife. I'll get back in when I feel confident doing so, when there's some real big news. And I feel like there's a lot of people like me who have a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines and we're ready to pump some money into Lower Style Motors, to Workhorse, into Hylion, even Tesla, our Neos, but we're just waiting for the right time. So right now, the shorts are in control. The shorts have power. And we just have to accept that. And that's not going to change until something incentivizing comes out. Something that really makes us want to buy more of this company. Some really big news that shows us, yes, this is a good investment. And you know, we should invest. And there has been that kind of news, don't get me wrong. There's been the, the increased pre-orders, etc, etc. The interview I did with Steve Burns. But during the market times what we live in right now, it is going to be very hard to move a stock, in my opinion, till after elections. That's, again, why I haven't really been buying anything. In the last month, I've bought one company, Momentus, SRAC, and I bought 200 shares. That's all I've bought in a month which for me is nothing. That is why I believe that this company right here that I love and have a lot of confidence in long term has been going down. And I also want to make it really clear that it's so easy to push a bear agenda when a stock's price is going down so quickly. Just like it's easy to push a bullish agenda when a stock price has been going up so quickly. So keep that in mind. And that's why I always say on this channel, you should always get your information from multiple sources. Not just from me, not just Yahoo Finance, Seeking Alpha or another YouTuber. You should get all of these different points of information and ultimately form your own thoughts and opinions when it comes to investing. That way you will be confident in the decisions you make. So keep that in mind. I've noticed a lot more bears coming out on YouTube in the EV market right now. It's easy to do right now because it's in a downturn. But guys, they are the reasons I believe that Lawrence Hill Motors has been going down in value. Now, one more thing I want to answer is do I think that the merger going through is going to boost us up massively in value? Honestly, no. I think we're past that stage with SPACs now. People have seen what happened with Hylian. People have seen what happened with Nikola. I don't think it's going to have the most effect in the world for lower cell motors, even upwards or downwards. I think we're going to continue with this general trend for a little while until, as I just said, we see some news. So sadly, I don't think the merger is the catalyst that we've all been waiting for. I mean, it was definitive. We knew it was going to happen. It doesn't really change too much. But I don't think it's going to be a repeat of Hylian, and I also don't think it's going to be a repeat of Nikola. So that is where I currently stand with lower cell motors. As happy as always, still holding my shares, haven't sold a single one, and I am contemplating buying more at current levels, my friends. Boom, there we have it, baby. I'm excited for the merger to go through. In general, mergers happening is obviously, <laughs> it's a good thing. We get our initial cash infusion. It puts the business in a better place. It shows us our actual market cap. It takes out a lot of the guesswork. And it also means that in general, they're gonna have to do more filings. They're gonna release more news. And I think a lot of us have noticed as of late on social media, in particular, Lord Sam Motors has been doing a great job of keeping active. So I'm hoping that through actually being public, they're going to keep up with that and, you know, they're going to actually take it to the next level. We're also hiring more and we expect to hire considerably more down the line. 
Just keep in mind all of the bullish points we brought up in the past. Literally everything still stands, my friends. But anyway, if you have watched this video all of the way until the end, you, my friend, are a true legend and I appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. You're helping me out so much. If you enjoyed the video, took some value and entertainment from it, please consider hitting that like button, drop me a comment and subscribing. All of those things are free and help me out so much. But yeah, I appreciate you all being here, guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic Friday, a fantastic weekend. I hope the market treats you well. I will see you for another video very soon. Peace.